In this presentation, we will allocate the net income in accordance with the partnership agreement. We will have a situation where we get to the end of the calculation where we will have to allocate negative amounts to the capital accounts. And that's something we want to watch out for and be careful of when we set up the partnership agreement. In other words, we're going to have the uh, income split be based on one, just an allocation, a salary type allocation, two, based on a capital investment, and then we'll allocate the rest in an even way. And when we do that final allocation, it's possible that we have um, over allocated based on these first two items and don't have enough income to, to cover that and then have to allocate basically a negative amount in that final position. And uh, so that's what we'll, we want to be aware of and that's what we'll look at here. We'll do it in a table format and then we'll do the same thing with journal entries here and post that to the trial balance. So we will have our three partners. We're going to have uh, C, X, and S are going to be our partners. We're going to say the net income, we'll take this from the trial balance over here if we scroll down, is 50000 in this case. That 50000 calculated as revenue minus expenses is what we will then need to allocate to the partners. Uh, if we scroll back up, our trial balance consists of assets in green. We've got the liabilities. Uh, in orange, then the capital accounts here in the light blue and the income and expense, the income statement accounts in the darker blue. Our goal here, in essence, to close out, it's kind of like the closing process, this 50000 to the capital accounts in accordance with the profit sharing agreement. So if we scroll back over then, we're going to say that the net income is that 50000 I'm going to start over with the total being here and we're going to decrease this total by whatever the profit sharing agreement says to get to the allocation base uh, at the end. So we're gonna say 50,000 is the amount we're gonna allocate of net income. Now the, the easiest way to allocate that to the partners would just have some kind of profit sharing agreement. If it was just a one third, one third, one third, then that would be very simple. We can just allocate it one third, one third, one third, and we would be done. Many partnerships, however, are much more complicated or can be, and that's one of the advantages of the partnership because um, it may be that one partner does a lot more for the business or another partner put a lot more money into the business and therefore it would seem logical to give a higher um, return on investments to those individuals. And we have the flexibility to do that in a partnership. Many times when we teach partnerships, a lot of people think that no matter what, it should be a one-third distribution because all partners are equal and it should all be fair, one-third. But uh, I, clearly there's going to be circumstances when everything isn't equal in terms of contributions, who put in more money into the partnership, and in terms of time, who's spending more time in the partnership. And that's okay. If someone spends more time than another partner, that's okay. Then all we need to do is make sure that everybody's happy by balancing that out with whatever the partnership agreement is in terms of who gets most of the revenue. <laughs> and as long as everybody's happy with those two negotiations, some person can put in more money, another person can put in more time, and we can allocate in accordance with what we believe is fair to all partners and hopefully everybody can be happy even though everything is not entirely equal uh, in terms of distribution equal in terms in a way it's equal in terms of what's right in terms of the distribution in accordance with the partnership agreement in any case we're going to have a salary distribution it's often called a salary distribution note that the salary distribution is not having anything to do with payroll it's just a fixed distribution of this 50000 Because it's fixed, it's kind of like a salary. So we're just going to take that out of this $50,000 amount, the salary amount. This is usually used in book problems, the salary type contribution, uh, for someone that works more in the company. If someone spends more time in the company, we might say, okay, we're going to give you a guaranteed amount of the distribution of net income because of your time spent there. And that's often the rationale and the reason for like just this, this fixed amount that we would allocate before the rest of net income. So we're just going to say that C, uh, X, and S, according to the partnership agreement, had 4000 3000 and 8000 respectively for that allocation amount. If we add those up, then that adds up to 15000 So let's do that here in F6. We're going to say equals SUM, double-click the sum function, Highlight the 4, 3, and 8 to give us that 15,000. So we're then going to do the subtraction problem, see how much we have left. This is our first allocation base. We had 50,000 before. We allocated out 15. So the difference equals the 50,000 
minus the 15,000 or 35,000. So then the 35,000 is what we have. Now, we also gonna say that the capital uh, account, we're gonna allocate uh, an, an amount to the owners in accordance with their capital account at the beginning of the time period at 10% of their capital account. And this is another thing that's pretty common, a, a way that we can try to give more benefit to people that put more money into the partnership. In other words, if, if we need money, of course, in the partnership to get going, especially in those beginning years, and in order to incentivize the partners to put more money in and leave it into the partnership, rather than take it out and put it in, in investments or something like that, we can give a return on the initial investment. We will get these amounts from the capital account. So if we scroll back over here and we pick up these capital accounts, this is usually what the capital account was at the beginning of the time period because any withdrawals we had, we recorded in a separate withdrawals account. So uh, it could be possible that someone put more money in and we would have to check that with uh, on the, on the uh, general ledger to see if, if, the, if this is not indeed the beginning balance. What we don't want to have happen is for a partner to try to put money in at the end of the partnership and then, and then get more distribution just because they put money into the partnership at the end of the year. Uh, so we're, and when the partnership agreement was at the beginning of the year. But uh, normally this capital account, if there was no investment, is the partnership amount as of the beginning of the year. So we're gonna use that for our allocation percent. So for C then, we're gonna say this equals the 144,000 times 0.1 or 10%. For X, we're gonna say that this equals 216,000 times 0.1 or 10%. And then for S, we're gonna say this equals 120, and note I'm just picking these up over here, thousand times 0.1 or 10%. So it's an allocate, it's, it's a, a distribution that we just uh, came up with within the partnership agreement. We just agreed that we're gonna pay 10% based on the beginning capital accounts of net income. Now note that that adds up to uh, 48,000 and we only had 35,000 to allocate of net income remaining. So if we add this up with the sum function in F8 equals SUM of these three, 14, 4, 21, 6, and 12,000, we get 48,000. Now if we subtract these out, we only had 35 left, so we're gonna end up with a negative number. That's the problem. So we're gonna say this equals the 35,000 minus the 48,000. Now we have a negative 13,000 because we over allocated. We over allocated the money, the net income, we only had 15, and we allocated more than 15 by 13,000 more than the 15. So now we're gonna to have to allocate the rest in accordance with what we say the profit sharing agreement is at the end, which we're saying is going to be an even allocation. So that means that we're gonna to have to take this 13 and allocate it evenly, which could really uh, be a consequence that would be unusual to the partnership. I mean, the partnership may not have expected that. So we wanna make sure that the partners understand that if we don't uh, clear whatever the balance is to cover these two restrictions, then the remaining amount will be distributed evenly between the partnership, which could be kind of counterproductive in some ways because when we allocate the net income in this format, we're trying to allocate to people that put more money in. So for example, this 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 KX's capital account went, we allocated 21,600 to X because X put more money in and therefore helped the business supposedly more by having more capital investment. So we allocate more of the net income earned by the company to X. But then if we have to allocate this loss evenly, then we're losing kind of that, that uh, distribution that we tried to make uh, proportional to the contribution of the partners. So we just gotta be careful that when we have a loss, we wanna note what we're gonna do in that case. We could uh, put some other kind of clause into our partnership agreement, like what happens when a case like this happens or what happens when the company uh, has, has a loss, what are we gonna do in those cases? But something to be aware of. So we're just gonna take this and we're gonna have to allocate it on a one-third by one-third basis, which is gonna reduce the capital accounts. So we'll do that by just saying this equals the 13,000 divided by three. Tab, do the same thing here. This equals 13,000 divided by three. Tab, and one more time. This equals 13,000 divided by three. Tab, and then we'll just sum this up 
equals the sum of these three and there we have it now it should bring us down to zero so now we're just going to add these up the 4000 plus the 144 plus the four minus the 4333 4c should give us the amount of the original 50,000 we're going to allocate 2c of net income so we'll go ahead and equals sum double click the sum function and highlight all those 4000 plus 144 minus 4333 gives 14067 We'll do the same for x equals sum, double click the sum function, highlight that entire column and tab, 20,267 allocated to x and then s equals the sum. Uh, we'll double click the sum function and add that up, giving 15,667. If we add these up, it should come out to 50,000. So equals the sum of these three there's our 50,000. So now we've allocated this 50,000 out between C, X, and S, 14,067, 20,267, and 15,667, respectively. Now we'll do the same thing. We'll allocate that out in terms of our journals. We won't do the same thing. We've got the calculation now. Now we're gonna allocate that uh, with journal entries to our trial balance. So we've got the net income here. And we're going to close this out. Now, this is really just kind of a closing uh, process that we will go through here and uh, then allocate this out. So we want to go through the normal closing process we would see with any type of business, uh, whether it be a sole proprietor or a corporation or a partnership. And then the last component of it will be that allocation. And that's what will differ between the three types of businesses. So let's start this out. The part that would be the same for a partnership or a sole proprietorship or a corporation would be We'll close out the sales or the revenue and then the expenses. So sales has 120,000 in it. We're gonna do the opposite thing to it to make it go down, which will be a debit. So we'll copy the sales, right click and copy. We'll put that up top in H5, right click and paste. One, two, three. The amount will be this 120,000. We're gonna credit something for that same 120,000. I'm gonna do that with a negative of this number. We could just type in negative 120,000, but I like to use that little formula. And then we're gonna put that to the income summary. That's gonna be our temporary account. It's a holding account used just in the closing process. So we'll copy that, right click and copy. We're gonna put that in H6, right click and paste, one, two, three. Then we'll indent that, go into the home tab, alignment, increase indenting. And then we can post this. So we've got the sales up top. It's gonna to go to the sales down here. We're gonna put that in N16, where we will say equals, and point to that 120, bringing the balance from 120 down by 122, zero. Then we have the income summary, which will be posted to the income summary on the trial balance in N15, where we say equals, point to the 120 credit, bring the balance from zero up by 120 to 120. Next, we're gonna close out the uh, expenses in another journal entry. Cost of goods sold and uh, wages are the only two that we're gonna have here in the example. So we're just gonna copy these two. These are debits, so we're gonna do the opposite thing to them and credit them. So we'll, we'll highlight those, right click and copy. Scroll up and put this in H, We'll skip a line, we'll, we'll put them on the bottom. In H9, right click and paste, one, two, three. I'm gonna indent that as well. Home tab, alignment, increase indenting. And then we're, we'll put the credit in J9. So we're gonna have just what's in there. So 60,000 credit of 60,000, and then we had 10,000 in wages, so we're gonna have a credit of 10,000. Then we'll sum those up on the debit side, and that'll give us our debits. So we'll say negative SUM using kind of like a plug formula. And you could move this out of the way or go from the bottom to the top. So you could just move this if you want to highlight these and then enter. So of course, the 60 and the 10 equals the 70 debit that we need. Now that's going to go to the income summary account, the clearing account again. So we'll right click and copy, put that up top in uh, H8, right click and paste, one, two, three. And there we have that. Now we'll post this one. So the income summary has something in it, so we'll double click on it, 
go to the end of it, say plus, and point to that 70,000 and enter. And then in cell N17, we're gonna say equals and point to that 60,000, bringing the 60,000 down by 60,000 to zero. And then in N18, we'll say equals and point to that 10,000, bringing the 10,000 down balance down by 10,000 to zero. So now the income statement accounts are zero, net income is now zero, and the income summary has net income in it. We need, we need to do, it's important to do that process, I think, because uh, a lot of problems, if you're looking at book problems, will just start at the income summary. They'll just say that income summary has $50,000 in it, and now we need to allocate that out. And we need to understand that that means that net income is an income summary, and we're gonna allocate that out. So it's helpful to go through the, the closing process and actually see a trial balance and see what net income is and how the net income is now in the income summary. Now we're going to take that and allocate that out to the partners. This is kind of like just the end of the closing process. Very easy to do if it's a partnership or a corporation because we just allocate it to the one capital account or the one retained earnings account. But for a partnership, we got to allocate it in accordance with the profit sharing agreement, which we came up with over here. So we've already got our numbers. Now we're just gonna allocate this out. So we're gonna debit the income summary. We're gonna right click and copy that. Put that up top in H12, right click and paste one, two, three. That will be for 50,000. And then we'll credit the capital accounts. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight them all at the same time. I'm gonna put my cursor on C, uh, on L9, C's capital. Hold down control and click the other capital account, X's capital in L11, and then the last capital in L13. So they're all highlighted. These are non-adjacent cells that are highlighted. So we can do that at the same time. Let go of control, then right click and copy. And we, we don't have to do this this way. We can copy and paste them one at a time too, but it's a little bit faster. And then we can right click and paste one, two, three. So and again, it doesn't matter if we use formulas or if we copy and paste, we could type it in here. That would be just as well but uh, that's, it's useful to, to pick that up or it could be a little bit faster. So now we're just gonna pick up these numbers, the uh, 1467, the 20,267, and the 15,667 into J13, 14, and 15. We wanna flip the sign, however, so instead of just saying equals, I'm gonna put a negative instead of equals and put that 14,067 and enter. And then for the next one, we're just gonna say negative instead of equals the 20,267 and enter. And then in the next one, we're gonna say negative instead of equals, this 15,667 and enter. So now the 1467, the 20,267, the 15,667 add up to the 50,000. The debits minus the credits add up to zero. Debits then equal the credits. Now we'll just post this out. So the income summary is here on the journal entry. It is here on the trial balance. We're gonna be in the middle in N15, double click go to the end of it, plus that 50,000 and enter. So that brings the balance down here. Here's C's capital. We're gonna go up to C's capital up top. We'll be in N9 equals, and then we'll point to that 14,067 and enter. And then we're gonna go to X uh, capital, which will be here in N11, where we will say equals point to that 20,267 and enter. And then we're in S's capital. Here's S's capital, where we will say equals, point to the 15,667 and enter. Okay, so now we're just left with the draws. So that's really the last part of the closing process, which we may as well finish up here. So the draws were 18, 38, and 24, respectively, for C, X, and S. So we're gonna do the same thing and just close those out. So we're gonna close them out to the capital accounts. And so uh, all we're gonna, uh, if we net these two out, we can see what it is, it's, it's 14067. In other words, we're gonna get rid of the 18 and include that 18 into the 15867, resulting in a balance of 140,067. We'll do that for all the capital accounts. So I'm gonna do the same little trick. I'm gonna highlight C's capital, hold down control, X capital, hold down control and S capital, let go of control, and then right click on those cells and copy. 
and we'll put that in H17, right click and paste, one, two, three. Then we'll pick up the withholdings, putting our cursor on the C's withholding, hold down control, X withholding, hold down control and S withholding, let go of control, right click on the selected cells and copy. And then we'll put that underneath in H20, right click and paste one, two, three. Then I'm gonna indent that going to the home tab, alignment and the increase indenting. So that's gonna be our journal. It looks kind of intimidating looking journal entry, but, and we could do this one at a time, like we could have just closed out the draws here to the capital account and then the draws and made three different journal entries. But usually we will see this in one journal entry to close out draws. And that, that's in alignment with our closing process, which basically is close out sales, the four step process at least. Close out sales, uh, close out the expenses, then close out the income summary, then close out draws. So we typically learn the closing process, oftentimes with four steps, with four journal entries. We're gonna go ahead and increase the indenting here too, just to keep it in format, the home tab, alignment, increase indenting. Then we're just gonna put the amounts. So it's 18,000 for C, 18,000, and 38,000 for uh, X, 38,000, and uh, 24,000. For S. Now the capital accounts are going to be debited because it's going to bring those accounts down. They're normal credit balances. We need to do the opposite thing to it to bring them down. And then the withdrawals have debit balances. We need them to bring them to zero, down to zero. So we're going to do the opposite thing to them. So I'm going to do that by just saying negative of this number, negative of this number, and negative of this number. So we're just putting a negative or a credit for the same amounts for the related capital withdrawals accounts. Now let's post that out and we'll see if it does what we want it to do. What do we want it to do? We want all these draws accounts to go to zero and we want these capital accounts to go down by those draws accounts and of course remain in balance once we're done. So here's the capital account, C's capital account. Here it is on the trial balance. We're gonna be in cell N9, double click, go to the end of it, plus point to that uh, C capital account, that 18,000, and enter. So we'll do the same for, uh, maybe, well, we'll do the same for X here. Here's X's capital account. Here's X's capital account on the trial balance. We wanna to post to N11, something's in it. We'll double click on it, go to the end of it, plus point to that 38,000. That'll bring this capital account down by the 38. Then we'll go to S's capital account here. Here's S's capital account on the trial balance. We want to be in the middle in N13. Double click, go to the end of it, plus, and then point to that 27,000, bringing that balance down. Okay, so now we'll post the other side to all the withdrawals, which should make them go away. So we're gonna to go to the withdrawals account for C in N10, say equals, Point to that 18,000, bringing the 18,000 debit down in the credit direction to zero. And then we're in N12, where we will say equals. Point to that 38,000, bringing the 38,000 down, balance down by 38 to zero. And then we're in N14, where we will say equals. Point to the 24,000, bringing the 24,000 balance down by 24,000 to zero. So that's the result here. We've got all income statement accounts now zero, all temporary accounts also zero, temporary accounts including the draws accounts which have been zeroed out. We're left with a post-closing trial balance for a partnership, which means that we only have balance sheet accounts. We've got the asset accounts, the liabilities. Assets minus liabilities is 450,000 in this case. That will equal equity, the capital accounts which add up here to 450,000. The tricky part for a partnership as compared to a sole proprietor or corporation is that we gotta break out this equity section by how much is owed to the partners.